So in this video, we're going to try and understand what those standard electrode potentials are telling us. And remember, they're all written as reduction reactions. And we also interpret the sign, the more positive it is, the more favorable it is. So right at the top of the list, we've got this electrode potential reaction. So it has a very high voltage. That tells us that the electrons are definitely pulled strongly in this direction. And so this is a very favorable reaction. So that means that fluorine is really, really good at pulling electrons towards it and converting them into fluoride ions. So it is excellent at grabbing electrons from things, which means that it is excellent at being reduced. But of course, if something else is losing those electrons, it means it's an excellent oxidizing agent. So we can interpret the top of this list. Everything on the left-hand side is basically being very good oxidizing agents. So oxidizing agents are things that cause other things to lose electrons, and oxidation is loss of electrons. So that's one really nice way to think about it. If you like, things at the top of the list are easily reduced. And that's another way to look at it. So that's what it means here on the left-hand side. So conversely, if we go all the way down to the bottom of the list, what we find is that these reactions don't go very favorably in the forward direction. So that negative voltage tells us that those lithium ions really do not strongly attract electrons. So lithium is not terribly electronegative, right? So that's essentially what telling us the same idea. What it does mean when we've got a negative cell potential is that the reaction actually likes to go backwards. So that is lithium really doesn't like to hang on to its electrons. So it's really good at giving them away. So we can interpret this a couple of different ways. We can say lithium is easily oxidized because it's really good at giving up electrons. We can also say that if you are giving up electrons to something else, you're making that something else be reduced. So we can say that these down here are really good reducing agents. So anything that easily loses electrons is really good at reducing other things that want to gain those electrons. So that's one way to look at this big table, actually, is that atoms or electrodes, sorry, at the top of the table are really favorable in the forward direction. So that means they're really good at grabbing electrons from other things and oxidizing them. Whereas things on the right hand side at the bottom of the table are really good at losing electrons and reducing other things. So these are exceptionally good reducing agents. Whereas things up to the top of my table that I had in my last slide are really good at oxidizing things. We can also see kind of as a method to learn how to build a cell that if we couple a reaction higher with a reaction lower, the higher reaction will go forwards, the lower reaction will go backwards. And so imagine we took, say, iron 3 and chromium 2, well, iron 3 is higher than chromium 2, so that we know that this reaction would go forwards and this reaction would go backwards. So if we ever built an electrode um, out of these two, a cell out of these two, sorry, this cell reaction would go forwards and this cell reaction would go backwards. In fact, some people kind of refer to this as a diagonal rule. You collect things that are higher up on the left with lower down on the right, and then the one reaction goes forward and the other reaction goes backwards. So how would we write that in a cell term? So the forward reaction is, let me see, reduction. So that's gain of electrons. Red cat, that occurs at the cathode. That's the thing, remember, we put at the right-hand side of a cell. And this backwards reaction here, right, this is oxidation because chromium is losing electrons and it takes place at the anode, uh, which is going to be on the left-hand side. So if we built that cell reaction, the cathode would be on the right. So we've got, let me see, iron and iron 3. So the iron can be our electrode. So we'll put it all the way on the side. And it's in contact with iron 3 positive. So sometimes it refers to 2 positive ions, so I need to be careful. There's a salt bridge. And on the left-hand side, I've got, well, it's actually kind of weird, I've got chromium 2 and I got chromium-3, and those are both ions. So what am I going to do here? So I guess I can have chromium-2, okay, and chromium-3. And I'm going to need something to catalyze that reaction. So I'm going to use a platinum electrode. And that electron is going to allow electrons to be, uh, let me see, lost by the chromium-2. And it will go into the electrode and complete the circuit. And the chromium-2, if it loses an electron, forms chromium-3. So this would be the cell diagram for this reaction here. And we can calculate that cell voltage now. So it's just um, E cell is just the right minus the left. So we can look at the iron. So it's got a 
cell potential of negative 0.036 volts. And we're subtracting away from that something that's even more negative. So of course that double negative makes a positive, so 0.50 volts. And if we add that together, we get a positive 0.46 volts. And we interpret a positive voltage as the cell is proceeding as we predicted. So if we ever got it backwards and we try to flip the cell around and we try to make the anode the cathode and vice versa, we would calculate a negative voltage. And we can interpret that as the reaction is actually not going in that direction. It's going in the reverse direction.